Good evening and welcome to Recharge. Good evening. Uh, are you excited? We're back on Wednesdays. We're back. The food is as great as always. It is so good to see you. And uh, if you're a guest, uh, this is your first Wednesday night recharge. Let, let me welcome you so we eat. Uh, if you can make it, and, and you made it through the line, and then you made it here, and then we have a quick, uh, just just mini service, right? Sing two songs. I preach a seven to ten to sometimes eleven, twelve minute sermon, right? just, and and then uh, and then we break up into our classes. And so uh, tonight I'm gonna. Uh, you should have had one of these, uh, and we'll talk about class assignments because there have been some slight changes tonight. Uh, but first, uh, let's jump into our recharge message. So uh, this, this fall on Wednesday nights, we're, we're going to walk through the names of God, the names of God on our Wednesday night recharge study. So let's ask this question. What is in a name? How do you feel when I say these people's name? Adolf Hitler. Abraham Lincoln, Nelson Mandela, Judas Iscariot, Mother Teresa. See, a person's name is an indication of their character, right? Their reputation, all that is true of them. everything that they have done. When I said a person's name, you remembered their character, their reputation, okay? If if we say, what does the name First Baptist Bernie mean to the people here in Bernie? What we mean is, what is our reputation? Do others know our values? Do they see that in us? We say we love Jesus, okay? When they hear our name, do they too say, you know what? They love Jesus. They love missions. They they stand for what is right. You see, we desire to be known for our character. God does too. He desires to be known for who he is. In fact, God is protective. He is jealous for his name. He is passionate for his name and his character and his glory uh, that it will be exalted in the whole earth. Listen and let these, a few of these scriptures just wash over you as we focus on God's name. Exodus 9 says, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Listen, he says, for by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the face of the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Ezekiel 36 Thus says the Lord your God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for my holy name. I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, and the nations will know that I am Yahweh. Habakkuk 2.14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as water covers the sea. In the New Testament, as Jesus was walking towards the cross, as he was walking towards the Garden of Gethsemane, he said this, now my soul has become troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this very purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came out of heaven and said, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Acts 4, 12. For there is no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. No other name. Philippians 2, 10. So that at the name of Jesus... Every knee will bow 
of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, it is his story, his plan, his gospel, and his name going to the ends of the earth. In Exodus chapter 33, after uh, the incident with the golden calf, God said to Moses, you guys are an obstinate people. I will give you the land. You can go into the land, but I am not going with you. Pause for a second and think about this. All the blessings, all the promises of the Lord, but not him. That's a heck of a question to ask ourselves. And Moses replies for the people, who are we without you? We are nothing without you. You are the real promise. We will not go. We will not get up one and take one step unless you go. By the way, that was the right answer, okay? And then there's this magnificent scene at the end of Exodus 33 where God says, yes, I will go with you. And Moses caught up in this incredible movement, this incredible back and forth. He, out of excitement, he shouts, he says, God, would you show me your glory? And God says, okay, here's what I'll do for you. You can't see my face, but I will show you my back. And he tells them, you're going to go up in the cleft of the rock, and I will, by the way, it's anthropomorphic, uh, you know, symbolism here. God says, I'm going to put my hand, and I'm going to walk by, and you're going to get to see my back. So then in Exodus 34, when it happens, Moses goes up the mountain, is in the cleft of the rock, and then you read it in Exodus 34. You, you know what you do not see? You do not get any physical description of what Moses saw. You simply get this, a declaration of God's name. Listen, the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as Moses called upon the name of the Lord. And then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity and transgression and sin, and yet will he by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. And Moses made haste to bow low toward the earth and worship. See, when God passed by, he declared his name. The Lord's Prayer, hallowed be your name. The first, most highest, most important request, hallowed be your name. That verb there, you probably haven't used hallowed this week in a sentence. That, that verb, that is the verb to make holy. It is a request, it's the first request, God, make your name holy. You say, but pastor, it's already holy. You are right. Then why is it a request? Because we don't see it and we don't realize it. The request is for us to be able to see it, to be able to realize it. That's going to be our prayer as we walk through the names of God this fall. God, would you show me your glory? Would you, would you open my eyes and my heart to comprehend how amazing you are? Would you put your character on display for me? And here's the incredible thing. Because when you read in scripture, you should be like, well, he did it for Moses. Why wouldn't he do it for me? You see, that is a prayer that God answers. In fact, his son teaches you to pray this first. Preeminently, pray 
that God would make his name holy amongst us, that he would allow us to see it and to taste it because there is nothing greater, nothing that he is more passionate about than the glory of his name. Our heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are, that you have given us a small taste of your goodness and your mercy in your son. That, that to walk with you and to know you is to go deeper and deeper into magnificent truths that we can never fully understand, that we will spend eternity drinking from the well of your grace and your mercy and your character on display. And we pray, as your son taught us, teach us to make your name holy. Teach us as we walk through your names in scripture. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.